We're at the 29th IFC and I'm with Margaret Bennett from Think Consulting Solutions who's just delivered a, a session on fundraising in the recession. Um, Margaret, you were head of individual giving at WWF during the recession in the 90s. What are the lessons that you would give to fundraisers now that you learned during, during the recession in the 90s? I think what we learned was that the impact of the recession um, in those days and which is holding true in the current recession is that um, your more committed supporters, so your regular givers, or which may be paying by direct debit or they may be cash givers, so those who are committed to you, will largely stay with you through the recession. And in fact, they may even give more um, because they will understand that uh, during times of hardship you need their support more. Um, whereas your, your supporters, individual supporters, corporate supporters, who are funding you perhaps on a more ad hoc basis, um, maybe giving you one gift, even if it's a very large gift, are likely to pause their giving. And for them, they're just having a pause. But for you, as a charity, it's actually stopping giving for a few years until things get better. So um, if you work around that, then some of the lessons that, you, that we learned from the last recession is that you need to focus on your committed supporters. You need to focus in particular on retaining and upgrading those supporters you already have as opposed to perhaps focusing on growing your file and going out and recruiting more supporters which we tend to do in times of plenty um, you need to focus on on um, sustainable income streams so those kind of income streams that will stay with you through the recession and will um, be with you when you're finished and come out the other side the other things you need to focus on, I think, are you need to think very carefully about general fund. So it may be easy to go out and raise a very large amount of money from um, a donor which is restricted, perhaps a foundation or a major donor or a charitable trust, but quite often that brings with it a burden of additional uh, general fund which the organisation has to generate to be able to pay for this because they don't come with enough overhead included. So you need to think very carefully. You need to understand, as I, as I think sometimes we don't as fundraisers, how much general fund the organisation needs and you need to set out to raise that. Um, I also think that in, you need to think about your fundraising portfolio. So it, when, when times are good and everything's growing and everything works, um, we have a tendency as fundraisers to grow our portfolio and quite often we hear said to us uh, the broader portfolio is a good thing and it will, will spread risk and that is true um, but in times of recession what you find quite often is that some of your more peripheral activities are, um, are just not making you any money and you need therefore to focus your efforts on what I would call your core business and your core business is a combination of those things that are very strong. So these are your core audiences, so the supporters for whom you are the number one choice, not the number three choice, the supporters you already have. Um, it's your core fundraising programs. So if you look at all of your fundraising, which are the ones that generate the large amounts of net income? Which are the ones that are profitable? Which are the ones that are sustainable? And which are the ones that will generate the general fund? In that basis? And also you need to look at very importantly, your fundraising team. So what are you just really, really good at? You know, are you a fantastic corporate fundraising team? Or do you, are you just brilliant at digital fundraising? Because these are the places where you can outperform the market, even if it's not your biggest income stream at the moment. You know, Prioritise that. Um, and I think another word around the fundraising team, uh, perhaps the most important word really is you must protect your fundraising team. You must protect it. You must protect your team from across the board cuts where we have to we have to cut 10% of our headcount that kind of thing um, because in a recession you have to be able to respond quickly you have to be able to um, you have to be able to invest and take advantage of the upswing of the market when it actually comes and it takes months to recruit new fundraisers you can't respond rapidly if you have to wait 6 months to recruit someone on your team so above all look after hold on to your fundraising staff and recruit more fundraising staff. Go against the trend, build a fantastic team and be ready to uh, take advantage of the recovery, which will come even if you don't know, if you can't predict when that's going to be. You said above all, look after and protect the fundraising 
team. Yes. Do you really think that is the most important thing that uh, charities can do in the recession? I do. I really do. I think fundraisers can continue to look after the supporters they already have. They can continue to come up with great ideas to fundraise that don't really cost any money. Um, and but you need the fundraisers to do that. So even if all your investment budget is slashed and you can't do innovative things, you can't recruit, you can still take care of the supporters you have. But if you haven't got the fundraisers, uh, I'm, I'm not just talking about individual supporters, I'm talking about companies, foundations, major donors, all these people that have relationships with us. If you don't have the fundraisers, you cannot sustain the, the relationships you have. Um, and your fundraising programme, however clever it is, however brilliant it is, will simply not survive. You said look after the core supporters. Are you saying or suggesting that maybe charities should freeze recruitment during the recession or just do less of it? I, I think do less of it. Um, and I believe that fundamentally during a recession, one of the purposes of your recruitment has to be to be a rolling test programme and monitoring the market. So if you were, for example, um, if you had a direct mail campaign, for example, and that direct mail campaign crashed very badly and wasn't viable in lifetime value terms, you should still do a bit of it and use the opportunity to test and pilot and develop new products because you know what your response rates were and your, your average gifts and your ROI on the way down. And if you're not out there continuing to monitor it, you won't be able to tell when things begin to recover. So your, your recruitment program, you may shrink it down to a very small level if it's so dramatically unviable that you can't justify it on lifetime value terms. Um, but you need to do some of it because you have to keep your finger on the pulse and you have to know exactly when the market begins to turn because that's when you need to be ready to really roll out again. And how do you think charities are doing in coping with the recession? Do you think they're coping with it fairly well? Or are they making some errors that you, having with your experience from the 90s, probably wouldn't be doing if you were in charge? I think, um, I think fundraisers are largely responding very well, um, and in thoughtful ways and quite strategic ways. I think um, that not all charities are necessarily at the, uh, at the senior management level responding along these lines. So I think there was a lot of, when uh, uh, certainly in the UK for example, when the, the recession first hit, there are a lot of examples of boards of charities immediately responding by saying what we need to do is cut, we need to stop recruiting, stop investing, cut back on fundraising, um, which is, is short-sighted. And yes, of course, you need to look at what you're spending and you may want to reduce but you all also may want to invest in other areas you need to keep investing so I think I think fundraisers by and large are being thoughtful and smart about it I think uh, there are a lot of, of fundraisers for whom this is the first recession and it, and it is quite challenging to to find places where you can go and people you can talk to and say can I just check with you um, what I think I'm doing is that right? Because some, because some of the lessons we learned were perhaps counterintuitive. Um, intuitively, you might think this would happen, and actually the opposite happened. So I think one of the lessons we learned um, from the last recession was people weren't surprised when their best, most loyal donors gave more during the, the recession, but they were rather surprised when at the end of the recession they gave less because they hadn't been prepared for the fact that those donors might say, OK, I've really gone into bat for you over the recession, I've neglected some other charities because I've chosen you, I've consolidated my funding, my fundraising giving round you, now I just, now you're OK, I just need to go over there and help the other out charities out for a while. So there are some counterintuitive things in there that I think it's helpful for fundraisers to, to learn from those of us who've already learned the hard way. And we'll be learning again when this recession I, I finally comes true. to an end. Yes. Yep. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you.